often when you want to take a picture of uh, something, a piece of art that has any reflective quality or uh, mirrors in it or whatever, uh, you can't shoot directly on the picture because the uh, reflections over here, you see the it just it just the frame alone is reflective enough, and there's some images and some things in the in the picture that are that are uh, actually reflecting too and don't look the right color. So there's a way to get around that, and uh, what I have tried uh, successfully to do is to shoot at an angle. And so we've got a picture here, the same picture on the shot, uh, but at an angle to the left. And it gets rid of most of these uh, reflections around the corners and uh, all of the ones in the picture, except for just right at the edge here. And so how would we get this angled picture back to uh, looking like you're looking at it sort of straight on? So how do we do that? Well, we use a function in this PaintShop Pro program that is called perspective correction. And that puts up a little uh, frame here. And what we have to do is go in and fairly carefully uh, position the, the frame so that the corners are on uh, known corners of something that is square. So I go in and we'll zoom around a little bit here and take the four corners and grab them and put, make them match the exact corners in the image. And uh, you can get real fussy about this, but it works pretty well if you're fairly close. We'll put the, the uh, corners on the corner. Now we'll zoom back to the frame and double click in the middle. And here's what happens. It's now switched the thing around to a, a flat image that is more like the, uh, the one you see on the wall over here. If there's a problem with aspect uh, matching, we can go about doing that too, uh, even with uh, the same program. We'll bring up a, we'll call it percentages. Well, you can adjust the size and shape of the thing. And if we do not lock the aspect ratio to the original, we can even make some changes in the uh, how square it looks. So let's see what we need to do if we use percentages, the width we'd want to be, say, 90%. Let's try that first. And the height will remain 100%. Let's do that. And then we'll see what, see what happens. It's hit a go here and see what it does. It's correcting. And now what we've got is an image that is about the same aspect ratio as the original, but without the reflections, and straight on. The uh, next trick, of course, is just to crop it in and get it uh, closer to uh, the edges of the frame so we get rid of all the background. Maybe we can float it over white or some other color, but we'll select the, the uh, cropping tool. This is here, since we've already squared the image, all we have to do is bring it up and grab the corners and make it match what you've got around the edges of the picture. Well, first we'll do one that gets the fr leaves the frame in. Let's make it match a little more accurately. And double click in the middle. And there it is. Nothing but the framed image. So we can save that as, uh, we'll, we'll save it as a cropped image. Okay, I've got, here's a version, we'll call it now C. Hit save. Or maybe we want to get rid of the uh, <laughs> the frame itself. So we'll go in and do the same thing, corner to corner, inside the frame. Double click, and it will save it under a new name. Now we're just changing the small initials after this to D. Now, if 
that is kind of washed out looking. There's some things you can do within the program that modify or enhance the photo. That's up here at the top. One is an automatic kind of a preset set of parameters. And sometimes that's very dramatic. It actually is pretty close. It brings the, the blacks down to black. And uh, if that isn't working so well, we'll undo that with a control Z. And then we can go up to the enhanced photo and there's another option that allows more tweaking within the correction. It comes up with something that's a, a pretty good average over here. With this, you can adjust the amount of brightness overall and enhance the contrast a bit. Uh, you can also play with the amount of color all the way from none up to way too much. <laughs> and so you kind of you can manually tweak things, so that, that assuming your screen is set up for a good average, you've got a final picture that is, to your eye, mo more like the original. The grays are correct, the whites are correct, and in this case we've got to reduce the uh, overall saturation. A little bit brighter, and again, once you're happy with it, hit OK. And we can save this as another option. And here I'm just changing a little bit of the name. And there you go. That's uh, several of the things you can do with this. And of course, any if you've got individual problems, maybe there's a little bit too much brightness over here. It is possible to use the clone tool and bring up a small brush size and actually push those colors and cover the uh, the part that's that's kind of flaring it depends on how much you want to fuss around with things but it's possible to erase even small irritating flaws in the image that don't match what your reality, uh, what your eye says should be real. So we're taking up little pieces of gray and painting them out to the edges. Now when we back off, all that flaring is gone from that edge and it looks like the original thing. So here in this program, if you like what you've got, if you hit close on the big X up there in the red and save those changes, it on like it does that makes the change. Here's a raw photo of some uh, images, uh, some objects that Marlia was interested in putting into a mosaic, and uh, I just shot it on a piece of raw cardboard. It's a it makes the work surface uh, safer. To get rid of the uh, nasty stuff, the blank wall and some of the seams in the in the paper over here, I'm using a function that's uh, called Clone Brush that picks up something in the image and then paints it over other things. So we'll use this this large clone brush and we'll just paint things out into the uh, distance here. And I'll give it a little bit more I'm doing it pieces here and just painting it a little bit random. It looks like the cardboard kind of went that direction to begin with. We'll do the same thing over here and paint the uh, whole wall out. And it's not too bad. I'm, you could fuss with the density of it. How about down here? Paint it out. Same thing about um, getting set rid of some of this uh, striations in the cardboard. I can zoom in a little bit closer and grab something next to it and then just paint it out this way. And you, you, um, every time I right click, it picks up an area that we're going to work on. And then we start to use that, that area to, in a clone way, to brush it over the stuff you want to get rid of. You can get real fussy with this, the size of the cloning to the point, make it smaller and uh, tweak it down to the point where you're getting 
real close into uh, detail, but that's the overall the uh, the whole trick about using the clone brush in your program to uh, compensate for problems that are that are in the image. That's the the way things work in Paint Shop Pro.